right, Selena Johnson and Vivica A. Fox. But now we're joined by a talented guitarist and composer who was well known by many as a former music director for the Tonight Show Band. Now his laid back style, comedic personality and music music musicianship i've never said that <laughs> that's cool don't say that's cool. Nah, turned can't him all into that. a household name for late night tv viewers and all around the world he's actually been doing his thing but before we bring him out let's take a look at his new show you bet your life with jay leno we have a clip time friend jazz great kevin eubanks and we are back together again on the comedy game show you bet your life the show kicks off this september this september yeah the ninth month yeah. But you know, in Latin, the word is really septum, and it's the seventh month in the Roman calendar. Right. Hey, Jay, my man, homie, where you going, man? What's up? Soulmates, please welcome Kevin Eubanks. Hey, how y'all doing? How y'all doing? How you doing? Thanks for having me. And I really enjoyed the conversation you all were having early. So, you know, I'm. I'm down with all that. It's, it went to right to the root of a lot of things. Appreciate Thank you. That. We love it. We love it. Well, let's just jump right into it now. You were born into a, a musical family in Philly. How oh, yeah. did your mother and your late uncle jazz legend, Ray Bryan, impact your musical journey? Completely. <laughs> all of this due to my grandmother, my mom, all of all her brothers on her side, Ray and Tommy, people that are playing with all great jazz musicians from Train, Lee Morgan, a lot of a lot of people. So we grew up when we grew up, me and my brothers, we grew up playing funk, cool in the gang, Earth, Wind and Fire, blah, blah, James Brown, all of that stuff. And then we started getting deeper in our instrument. We started getting into jazz because we wanted to know more about theory and harmony and things like that. So and back then you couldn't really go to a school unless it was classical because you couldn't get degrees in jazz music. This is mm. late 70s. There was only a couple um, institutions in the country where you could get degrees like that. Turns out getting a degree is cool and everything, but the 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 real education, not just the only part of the education, but a very big part of, of learning your craft is going, going out on the road, rehearsing, writing with uh, great musicians. And in jazz, one of the things that really is beautiful is that you get to be 20 years old, you get to be 18 years old, playing with somebody that's 50 or 60 or 70 years old. So you get to learn a whole lot of things about life from talking to them when you're touring, when you're getting in situations. So it changed a whole lot of, a lot of things. So um, it's all about from my, uh, my mom and her brothers and also my dad, cause he was more like the disciplinarian. Right. Yeah, he said, if you're going to practice, be real with it. Okay. It's, it's the, not a joke, it's serious. Kevin, for the people that want to follow in your footsteps or could dr just dream to be anywhere near, you know, your level of success. I want you to talk about any obstacles you may have faced while maneuvering through you know philly as a young black musician that's that's really interesting because um philly um the schools that i went to in philly and a lot of things were um a little bit they, they're a little strong so um yeah. but but what what happens which i didn't really think about it till later because we had so much fun playing music with different musicians from different, you know, West Philly, North Philly, uh, Germantown. Uh, so once you get into really playing with everybody, just to get around, cause I was really young, 14 years old, 13 years old. Wow. Um, but my mom and dad, they had a big conversation about me playing at 13 years old, playing in bars and playing and things like that. So, um, but they let us do it, but traveling around uh, Philly, I would hitch hitchhike to different rehearsals because I was too young to drive. But oh, if wow. you had a, if you had an instrument in the neighborhoods, people gave you a pass on everything. Hmm. They would say, you know, he's a musician, blah blah. Where are you playing? You playing for our um, our proms, our weddings, or this and that and the other. So it was a different vibe. Being part of something artistic like that meant something in the neighborhood. And in the school systems, they used to have a lot of uh, music happening. They had orchestras, they had small groups, Damn. they had all of that. Mm -hmm. And that touched the neighborhood as well as touching the actual students that were doing things at the school, playing, you know, talent shows, things like that. But walking around a neighborhood when somebody was carrying an instrument, when you're playing in an all-city orchestra, when you're playing in things like that, it made a difference in the neighborhood. Some For some reason, 
they dug that. People liked that. They felt yeah. like their neighborhood had some culture to it that was alive and, and you know, it, it was it was nice, but I didn't really think about it because I was so wrapped up into the music itself. I didn't even know how down that was that people gave you a pass and Philly wasn't no joke. <laughs> no, okay, still ain't. <laughs> Kevin, you spent 18 years as the music director for the Tonight Show. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, working with Jalen. I mean, you're. I mean, you were his sidekick. You know, what's now? What's it like for you now that from going from the sidekick, which kind of like a little bit behind the scenes, to now being in front of the scenes? Well, one of the the um, it's a lot to it, and I'm learning as I'm going. Yes. But the deep thing that I'm I'm dealing with, well kind of got over the hump of it is that I'm not playing guitar. I'm not playing, you know, I'm writing music for the show, but I'm mm. not playing, um, I'm not playing guitar on the show. I'm really um, ah. finding how to be a good uh, co-host. Mm. And that took me a minute because I don't go anywhere without a guitar since I was a kid. I started violin at seven, changed the guitar at 12, been playing and touring around the world ever since mm. then. So now I'm in a situation <laughs> where, um, they uh jay said well, we want you to be the co-host and it took me a while to actually let it go i called some of my friends back in philly said man i'm getting ready to do this this gig without my guitar and i was kind of <laughs> holding on to it and one of my high school friends said no man you ain't looking at it right um this is a different opportunity you're going to play you ain't gonna you're not going to stop playing Mm -hmm. But put the guitar down and learn how to be a co-host. This is what we'll, Jerry, we, want, we grew up since we're 13 years old. Mm. So I, no, call, I, can, I, I was going to say, I can absolutely tell that you are into your guitar because you got that funk face. You know what I mean? <laughs> old school, you know what I mean? Old school, old soul. But I was going to say, speaking of the Tonight Show, you know, mm -hmm. I know, you know, we do a lot of gossip and stuff here. And I know you have a lot of stories, you know, because you've worked with Jay for a long time. But one time you had to convince... Um, one of the legendary singers, the boss, Diana Ross, uh -huh. come out of her dressing room. So tell me what happened. How, how, what, what do you mean? <laughs> we were, um, where were we at? Uh, I forget what town I was in. Might have been, I think it was Phoenix. And uh, the Super Bowl was going to happen. And Diana Ross was going to be the, you know, the halftime at the Super Bowl. And meanwhile, she was going to be on the show. You know, we moved the show from L.A. to Phoenix uh, for that week. And uh, and I was excited because Diana Ross was going to be on the show. Right. So um, so it's time to go over Diana Ross thing. So I was just sitting in the in you know in the auditorium, and I wanted to watch how they rehearsed, how they did everything, and everybody was getting frantic because Diana Ross was not coming out of her dressing room. Whoops. And and nobody mm -hmm. did, nobody knew what you know what they're going to do. And they just kept, I could see something was wrong, but I just stayed in my seat. I said, I'm gonna stay out of this. I'm just gonna chill and see how this, you know, how it works out. So finally, somebody came to me and said, Kevin, can you, uh, can mm -hmm. you talk to, to Ms. Ross? And I said, about what? I said, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> said okay. I don't know her. I never worked with her. I don't know her music director. I don't know, you know, I'm, you know, I'm trying to see how it, you know, how it evolved. That just makes said, sense, well, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, what, what is going on? So they said, we're running way behind and she won't come out of her dressing room. Could you go in and speak with her? So I said, yes, because I never met Diana Ross before. <laughs> oh, so wow. I just wanted to go in and say something. Hey, just, girl. I'm a fan. I grew up <laughs> listening to the Supremes, listening to Marvin, you know, all of that. And I could tell my mom and dad, I met Diana Ross. So I knocked on the door. And they said, well, who's that? I said, this is Kevin. I'm the, the MD for the show. I just wanted to um, uh, say hi to, to, to Ms. Ross. So they opened the door and they let me go. I said, look, they asked me to come in. Really, they asked me to come in and see, would you come out and do, you know, your rehearsal or whatever you're doing? But that has nothing really to do with me because that's <laughs> between, that's well, between the us. Get real. I, I, I don't know her like that. Right. So um, did you get her said, out? You are drawing this out. What is the story? Did you get <laughs> the story out? Or not? Is, can I have an autograph? And I can't wait to tell my parents that I met you. And she <laughs> just gave me a big hug and says, here, I'll write it out for you. And then I left. But then five minutes later, she came out. And they, and what was your energy that brought her out then, huh? Broke the ice. Oh, it was your mission accomplished. 
and your real your realism and speaking of realism um it has gotten you a show on a different platform other than music which mm -hmm. i totally understand because i have to go from music to being a co-host every monday mm -hmm. <laughs> you have mm -hmm. a show called you bet your life with jay leno which is a big dog in talk period right. now right. you are a co-host what can you tell us about the show? Talk to us about the show. What can we expect? And what can we expect from you on the show? Mm -hmm. The show is a lot, um, it's a lot of comedy. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but one thing that's real important about the show is the contestants that come on. The, the contestants that come on, when they're just real about themselves, when they're having fun, and they're just letting it, just kind of letting their natural instincts flow, it changes. It makes everything really cool. It makes them talking to each other. These are two people that never met each other and they, you know, they, they make some money. Uh, we have fun. We talk about what they did, what they do for a living and they just get into it themselves. So I like it the most when um, the contestants become a major part of the show mm -hmm. because they're just being who they are. They're just being real. They fly in from here. They fly in from there and the show takes care of flying them wherever they're coming from. So mm -hmm. we've had, you know, all kinds of people that didn't know each other and they work together to solve these questions where they can, you know, make some money, have some fun. But the things that they get into is just really simple. Mm -hmm. It's nothing hard about it. the questions aren't hard. So it's kind of like a get together with this in the background. You make some money, you, can, you know, answer some questions and things like that. And Jay and I, we just kind of watch it happen. And, and it's still kind of turning into what it is. But my favorite part is when, when the contestants come out and they're coming from all over the country and people that are visiting uh, into the States. We had a brother from Nigeria that was in, uh, hmm. friend, you know, somebody from Haiti was in. They just happened to be here. And they came in, one was a musician and said, no, I came to the show. I wanted to sit in the audience because... Yeah. I have some of your records and I wanted to talk to you about it. And, then, and that was a few, about a couple of weeks ago. And now all the things that you all were talking about earlier about Haiti, that wow. was beautiful that you mentioned that and give some spirit to all of that. And um, so a lot of things can happen, but it's just, I don't know. It's just people talking with each other with a large uh, implement of comedy and, and having fun. Kevin, speaking of your contestants, we, we have a special message. I'm sorry to cut you up, but we definitely no, no, no. want to let people know about this. We have a special, special message for people who are interested in being a contestant on your show. Let's take a look. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm Jay Lano. I'm hosting the classic game show, You Bet Your Life. Want to be a contestant? Go to YouBetYourLife.com and sign up. So have some fun and win some dough. It looks, love Jay Leno. it looks really exciting. And just to reiterate, You Bet Your Life is looking to fly in contestants from all over the country. So if you're looking to win $5,000 in cash money, make sure you submit. <laughs> For information, go to YouBetYourLife.com. That's YouUBetYourLife.com. Dot com. Kevin, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, Kevin, I think you need to let them stuff. know that the Queen's got to come on there. Just we can compete. Come on through. Well, we're, come on we're, through. You got it. You heard it, y'all. Okay. Come on through. And we thanks for saying all to. that, uh, Claudia, because I was supposed to say that stuff, but I forgot all about it. Listen, we, we got about. you. We got oh, you. We got that you. We got you. Cool. Well, as a talk show host that's been doing this for a while, I got it together. <laughs> I got you. No, I'm just kidding. So thank you so much. Once again, be sure to follow uh, Kevin on social media. And again, check out his new show. You can bet your life with Jay Leno premiering on September 13th. And make sure you log on to the website, get all that information, and go ahead and get that money. Thank yeah. you once again, Kevin Eubanks. Best of luck with your new show. And we'll be looking for an invitation to do a little cross promotion. We'll be there to support you. Thank and you so much. Thank, thank you all for what you're doing and what you're talking about. And you all look really beautiful and uh -huh. all of that in all the best ways. And it's feeling good too. Not just looking good, it's feeling good too. So hey. keep doing what you're doing. No and, doubt. And uh, keep kicking the, the golf and all that and uh, doing your thing. <laughs> Once so, again, uh, that guitar. Get that guitar back in that hand. I know. Right. You're right. You're right about right. that. Once you're again, right You Bet that. Your Life is part of the Fox family. So make sure you check your local listings for your local Fox affiliate, your local listings. That's September 13th. That is the premiere. And you don't want to miss it. So set your DVRs and don't miss this brother doing his thing. We'll be right back. We're going to take a I quick break. That, Our pleasure. Appreciate we'll be right back right after this with more cocktails with Queens. All right. Thank Thank